Well, it's over. In September of 2018, I fell in love with a show called Hilda, an animated vanity show about the adventures of a young girl named Hilda. I thought it was one of the best animated shows I'd seen ever. I watched it over and over again, I showed it to everyone that I knew. The series was imaginative, beautiful to look at, and Hilda's world was just a fun place to be in for a while. Of course, all great shows must come to an end. And 2023 officially saw the release of Hilda's third and final season. It's always bittersweet when a show you love ends, but I'm happy I got to spend time in this world with these sweet little characters. So, to celebrate its three season and one movie run, here's Here's my retrospective on Hilda. I don't think a show, animated or otherwise, has won me over as quickly as Hilda did. If you haven't seen Hilda yet and you want to know if you like it, all you really need to watch are the show's first two minutes. Nothing really happens plot-wise. We start with a bird flying across the city and into the forest, and then we see Hilda and Twig interacting creatures like the water spirit, the cloud, and the wolves. Which are these fluffy things, by the way. But already, doesn't the world of Hilda seem like a world you want to live in? Doesn't the gorgeous animation and cozy atmosphere seem so, so inviting? And doesn't Hilda herself seem like someone you want to befriend? She hasn't even said a word and we already know she's curious, free-spirited, and a proud adventurer. And her sidekick Twig is adorable as heck. The next five minutes then have Hilda and Twig being chased by a troll, with Hilda managing to somewhat befriend it. And by the time Hilda says this... Wow, that was pretty traumatic. But such is the life of an adventurer. You're sold. This is the protagonist you want to hang out with. This is the forest you want to explore. Which is weird, because a lot of the show doesn't even take place in the forest. Yeah, Hilda's house gets crushed by a giant, and she and her mom then move to the city of Trollberg. I found this to be an odd choice the first time I watched this show. I mean, look at this forest. Woodmen, tiny elves, friendly giants. So many cool, magical things can happen in these woods. Why are we suddenly moving to the city? But it turns out, the city of Trollberg is just as fantastic a place to spend time in. Trollberg is one of the coziest animated cities out there. And the more the show goes on, the more alive and lived in Trollberg feels. It's a city filled with history, traditions, and familiar faces left and right. Hilda still occasionally finds herself venturing outside of Trollberg, of course. But the city itself boasts some pretty interesting magical creatures, like the Great Raven. Thank you for everything, Tilda! It's Hilda Hatch. Uh, what's the point? The Mara. And the Rat King. Oh, oh, oh we're so fast! No pudding for us! <laughs> He's fun. One of my favorite things about Trollberg is how normalized magical creatures are to the citizens. Keep an eye to the sky and count as many wolves as you can. They openly acknowledge creatures like Nissus, trolls, and wolves. But they still live their ordinary magic-free lives like everyday people. It's a type of low fantasy I find very endearing. Where stories like Harry Potter and Percy Jackson have the fantasy side of their worlds, this secret thing, where only certain people can witness and interact with it, the people of Hilda are just like you and me. This world building invites us to imagine how we could also be living our lives regularly. But this time, with an elf by our ear or the occasional sighting of wolves in our sky, it's absolute escapism. And lucky for us, the show's episodes revel in this wonderful fantasy. Which leads us to... Hilda is mostly an episodic show. There's the occasional two-parter and the third season goes for a more focused, ongoing story. But the majority of Hilda's chapters are self-contained, creature of the week stories. Which you think would lend itself to a number of filler episodes, but no. Season 1 and 2 have zero filler. Every new episode seems determined to outdo the charm and imagination of the previous one. And I am insanely impressed with how creative the writers of the show can get. Great ravens, trolls, linworms, nowhere spaces, ghost pirates, witches, and time travel? What a blast! These are the kind of adventures your inner child wants to go on. And several moments in the series had me seriously jealous of the show's protagonist. I mean, I wish I was the one flying with a great raven. Or riding on a wolf. Or breathing underwater thanks to the help of a water spirit. And not only are these adventures incredible fun, but they're also surprisingly nostalgic. So much of Hilda feels straight out of a young kid's imagination that I'm often transformed back into a kid while watching the series. From performing spells to hiding from forest giants, several episodes teleport me to lazy Saturday afternoons as an 11-year-old, dueling pictures of magical creatures in my drawing book and playing make-believe in the playground. The episode that made me feel this the most was season 2's The Old Bells of Trollberg where Hilda and her gang embark on a mission to shut down the city bells that irritate the outside trolls. They even have a name for this operation. In films, operations like this always have a code name. How about Operation Deer Fox? Thunder Team. Everything from the planning. On three. One, two. Operation Deer Fox Thunder Team. It's how they give each other code names. Buckman, this is Blue and Badges. Are the elves in position? Over. To the mission itself felt like playing spy during recess with my grade school classmates. Oh, and while Hilda's episodic, there is some light continuity throughout the show. Oftentimes, a character will cameo in later episodes, or there'll be a reference here and there about previous adventures. We need a witch to make this work? We don't know any witches. Hilda, you cast the spell. 
That makes you the witch. Non-witches tainting our sacred halls. Actually, I am technically a witch. I summoned two enchanted tide mice. So. It's a nice little touch that I appreciate. It reminds us that this is one big world and one big story, and it adds familiarity and affinity to these characters and their tall tales. Another thing I want to mention is that oftentimes, Hilda also manages to be a really funny show. Several scenes had me guffawing, and with a lot of kids' media feeling the need to force jokes onto the script, I'm enthralled with how natural, welcome, and, well, funny Hilda's comedic moments are. Must be one of those earthquakes that only furniture can feel. I've read about those. <laughs> They're very real. Excuse me, I'm looking for some info on. No, actually, we're trying to get a ghost to come back. I wasn't recommending that. It just slipped. <laughs> All that said, I'm sure you've noticed I haven't said much about Hilda's third season. That's because I'm not a fan of Hilda's third season. A lot like Frozen 2, Hilda's final season suffers from the need to be bigger, bolder, and more solid, wanting to explain what never needed to be explained, when the original was nothing more than a simple fantasy. Most of the third season felt needlessly complicated and strayed way too far away from what originally made Hilda great, that being its childlike simplicity and wonder. I don't mind the idea of a continuous story for the show, but did it have to be so self-serious? There's so much info dumping being done left and right, the finale is way too long, and so many beloved characters get sidelined in favor of focusing on new boring characters like Hilda's dad and her grandparents. Also, did we really need an explanation for why Hilda loves the forest and adventure so much? So, what you're saying is, I am a fairy! You're part fairy. Part of the charm of the series was that Hilda was just like you and me, and if we lived in her world, we could be just like Hilda too. The seasons need to explain the show's magic. I haven't seen a single living thing here. All magical creatures came from here originally. That's what they say. Feels like the result of a self-imposed pressure to end the show with a bang, which would definitely explain why the finale had to be 77 minutes long. But one week season is not a bad show make, and Hilda still remains an incredible show. Plus, I really enjoyed seeing the main trio as teenagers, which leads us to... I already talked about how much I loved Hilda and Twig, but just about everyone in Hilda's life is endearing in their own way. They've all got terrific voice actors too. I don't think there's a single miscast character throughout the entire show. As the series is strongly about friendship, Hilda spends a lot of time with her best friends, David and Frida. And my my do I love this trio. They each have their own personalities, so it's not like David and Frida are just Hilda's clones or sidekicks. Frida is smart and orderly. She can be self-important at times, but is ultimately a good friend. You're sure he didn't do something bad? I'm sure, trust me, he- Hilda. I trust you. David is amiable and quirky, but he's also a scaredy cat who lets his fears get the best of him sometimes. I am deathly afraid of belts. Luckily, it's never been a problem since I'm very good at fitting into trousers just right. Here and there, the writers manage to slide in some episodes which are more about David and or Frida, like when David becomes fearless or when Frida runs for student council, so it never feels like their lives revolve around a blue-haired protagonist. One episode I really like is in season 2, where Hilda and Frida find out the librarian's a witch and help her out on a quest. Throughout the episode, Hilda acts like she's going to be a hero, and maybe even ultimately a witch like Kaisa. But every time that happens, the episode subverts Hilda's expectations and has Frida save the day. By the end, it's Frida who becomes a witch, and Hilda's perfectly okay with being her sidekick. Surely you see that one of them is a natural witch, but you have what it takes to learn. And you, you've got the spirit to be an invaluable familiar to Frida. <laughs> I can do that. Which I like. I also knew the show was doing something right when season 3 started, and I was so, so happy to see these three as teenagers. I was especially happy to hear David's deep voice. Was that an emergency? Look at that, my boy's all grown up! Outside of the trio, we have even more lovable characters like Johanna, Alfer, Tantu, Woodman, and even side characters like Gerda and Kaisa. All these characters have plenty of personality and are a delight to spend time with. Alfer's my favorite. With his extremely positive attitude and passion for paperwork, he is just the cutest character ever. How do you spend your time here in the city? I don't know. Yeah, I hate to say this, but he's not a great interview. Is this a story about paperwork? Oh yes, most elf legends are. <laughs> Twig! Raven! And Alpha! And the more the show goes on, the more these characters get to interact with each other, and many of them form specific and unique relationships. Given how Alpha lives with Hilda, the two are obviously close friends. <gasps> mm. Hilda, I'm very fond of you, but I'm afraid I must decline. But he's got an endearing friendship with Frida too, as the two share a love for research and organization. 
So my essay offered a broad historical perspective on troll safety. Heavily footnoted, I presume? Absolutely. Oh, sounds delightful. David's got his thing with offer too. All right, young squire. Who knows what mighty challenges and grand adventures we shall face in order to find the Lindworm. It's right there. And a friendship with another elf named Bartel. Bartle did it. It's to keep the bugs out. You know, David is quite the young man. He has set the bar very high for future hostages. Now, the Grey Raven doesn't appear much, but when he does, he's got a sweet friendship with Hilda. Good to see you, kid. What did I miss? There's Alfred and Bertel, Hilda and her mom, Hilda and Tantu, Johanna and Tantu, Alfred and Johanna, and even most surprisingly, David with the librarian Kaisa. I did not expect this friendship at all, but it's really adorable, isn't it? We make a pretty good team, David. Glad I could help. Uh, librarian? Call me Kaisa. Glad I could help, Kaisa. Since Kaisa mostly interacts with the girls, it was nice to see her team up with David this time. Granted, chasing down the tide mice is really the only time the two are a team, but the finale does put in this moment of them interacting, and I'm glad Hilda doesn't forget those tiny, meaningful interactions. I thought it'd be fun to end this retrospective listening down my favorite episodes. So, in chronological order, here are my favorite chapters from each season. Season 1, The Hidden People. I don't think the show Hilda could have asked for a better first episode. The Hidden People establishes so much about what we need to know about the show, like its fantasy environment and the personalities of multiple characters, all while being incredibly charming and nailing that warm, cozy vibe the show will continue to offer and offer. I am seriously appreciating the coziness in here right now. The Bird Parade. The first episode of Hilda Living in Trollberg, this outing is a great introduction to the setting, as it strongly establishes a sense of community and character within the city. That Bird Parade looks like a ton of fun. It's also a really magical episode, especially when Hilda's flying with a great raven, and the chapter even boasts some hearty laughs here and there. I've lost my memory. I think I'm important. Who doesn't? <laughs> the Nightmare Spirit. I love David, so an episode with this heavy a focus on him was obviously going to be in this list. But this episode also gives us two new cool creatures, which are the Rat King and the Mar. Hilda secretly being afraid of bicycles in the city was a nice touch, and her and David switching places gave us one of the funnier scenes in the show. Is that Hilda snoring? The Lost Clan. Only in a show like Hilda could a territorial dispute be solved by giving a socially anxious dragon flowers in exchange for her burning a tiny contract. I've been trying to get my hands on some good urban flora for years now. Unfortunately, I haven't been able to muster up the energy to go back into the city. My social anxiety is just awful. There are a lot of other great moments here, like David and Bartel getting along. So tell me, what do you, what do you, what do you usually do when you're a hostage, eh? This is actually my first time. And Alfred just being Alfred? But my absolute favorite moment was when Hilda, Alfred, and Frida were riding across the sea in the water spirit. Gosh, do I want to experience that. The Tide Mice. It's sweet to see Hilda want to help out her mom and David so badly, even to the point of carelessly using a spell she doesn't realize might steal their souls. Every Hilda fan knows what the absolute highlight of this episode is, though. Also, creator Luke Pearson is in this episode. There's a spell in L7. It's sticky and it's spreading. That's all I know. Season 2, The Witch. As said before, I really like how Frida becomes a witch in this episode and how Hilda becomes her familiar. Although it is really weird how every other witch has an animal familiar and Hilda's a human. Regardless, this episode is still a really fun time as we finally get to see more of Kaiser the Librarian and we're officially introduced to Matilda, one of the show's best recurring characters. Oh, come on now. Nobody's going to the void of no return over a library book. The Old Bells of Trollberg. Again, an incredibly nostalgic episode. We definitely weren't as cool as this team though. The Deer Fox. Do I even have to say anything? This episode is absolutely stunning. It's one of the more experimental episodes of Hilda, but that clearly worked as this episode won the show two Annie Awards. It's atmospheric, it's mesmerizing to look at, and it's only gonna make you love Twig even more. Our first adventure, Twig. Just you and me. Where should we go? The George Incident. The Tide Mice return in this episode filled with excitement, humor, and even Ghostbuster references. The George Delivery Man is another one of my favorite Hilda side characters. Nothing like a good disenchantment spell. <laughs> Double wowzers. And once again, it's nice to see David and Kaiser get along so well. What an odd but charming team. The Replacement. I can't tell you how much I love Alfred. So seeing him have to leave Hilda because the elves thought his reports were too embellished? Yeah, it definitely got me emotional. There's nothing to be done, Hilda. But you don't just work here. You have a life here. You're my friend, and after all we've been through, you're... you're like family to me. I'm sorry, I just need a moment. But of course, we got our happy ending. 
And Bartella and Alaska had even help Alfred out in this episode. Was Agnes really the only option? She volunteered. Uh, and when Agnes volunteers, there's no refusing her. Which was awesome to see. It may be over, but I think Hilda's going to be one of those shows that lasts forever. Or at least a really long time. It may not be as popular as, say, The Owl House, but it's got a strong fan base and extremely high praise from critics. My guess is that in the upcoming years, people are going to look back and see the series as one of the best animated shows of the late 2010s and early 2020s. And even if that doesn't happen, the show is definitely going to stick with me. A part of me will always remember these characters fondly, and the world of Hilda will always feel like home. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, please subscribe. And comment down below what you think of Hilda and what your favorite episodes are. I want to hear all about it. Till next time.